Hi, good morning. <laughs> so today's show, we're going to be talking about relationships. And so, do we want to kick it off with a... Yeah, we're going to start with a beautiful prayer. So, we invite you to get this, fill this in your heart, as we did. <laughs> Let me forget my brother's past today. This is the thought that leads the way to you and brings me to my goal. I cannot come to you without my brother. And to know my source, I first must recognize what you created one with me. My brother is the hand that leads me on the way to you. His sins are in the past along with mine, and I am saved because the past is gone. Let me not cherish it within my heart, or I will lose the way to walk to you. My brother is my savior. Let me not attack the savior you have given me but let me honor him who bears your name and so remember that it is my own. Forgive me then today and you will know you have forgiven me if you behold your brother in the light of holiness. He cannot be less holy than can I and you cannot be holier than he. Well, we have much to get through today. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of relationships and of course the miracles. And um, it started with me actually, this feels like a continuum from um, last week's show, mm -hmm. which was about desires. And um, from that, through my, through my prayers, it's been like, what are relationships? Um, and like from the course each time I, I would talk with Jesus I say well I understand that um, there's the one relationship there is ultimately one relationship um, so what are people what how how does that how does that serve so all the time I would ask do I have to get close to people and he'd say no you don't have to get close to people well, okay that's what I thought you're saying in the course of miracles so what is it then? What are we using these relationships for? What are the purpose of them? And so this has been um, very deep in my mind um, for some time, and he took me to um, the section, the Holy Encounter, and started reading through that. <clears throat> and that's been like really, really helpful. And so continually just asking and and it hadn't come through until one point. So I really, really want to know exactly what these relationships are for. And he said, well, they're just reflections of truth. That's what any relationship is. It's only a reflection of truth. And whatever is not true will drop away into the false. So if you, that's the reason why you don't see it as people, because people aren't true. But yet, there is the truth in each and every one of us. And so that's what we need to be seeking in one another. That's why we can find ourselves or lose ourselves, depending on which lens we're looking through. So that kind of really excited me. It was like, wow, this is, this, this is great. This is the kind of answer that I've been looking for. Because it's like in that separate mind of believing that there's, that there's people and just... And like, yeah, there's the one relationship. It just felt very difficult to bridge that, to bridge that gap. Like, why would I even bother with these relationships, really, if I'm just going to come to you? It makes perfect sense that I would do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, while you're here, you can find the truth in one another. So it was like, great. And then it was explaining, yeah, that like, 
whatever doesn't feel good, whatever's um, uncomfortable, guilt feelings, guilt towards your brother, is all completely false. So you can completely just continue to let that go. And as you continue to let the false go, the truth will actually begin to emerge in front of you. That's all we have to do. It's like, okay, this is really great. So I was really like happy. Like I've been given something very, very practical is each time I go to join, which by the way is very difficult as I've been finding out. Um, <laughs> it's like putting that in your mind first. So it's like, no, this is desiring for the truth. Okay, in, in, in this joining. And then just see what happens in that. So this is my little exercise for everybody this week. So try this. Every time you meet anybody, wherever you are, try and remember it's only for the truth. <laughs> and look that person in the eye, you know, say it to yourself, okay, I want to see the truth in this person. And you'll be surprised at what comes up <laughs> through this process. Believe you me. <laughs> so it was really, really exciting for me. Yeah. And so the beautiful thing is, is if it doesn't feel loving, don't beat yourselves up over it. It's like, okay, great, this is the false. Mm -hmm. So this is really good. I'm seeing things that are false. There's nothing going wrong. It's just that I can let this go. And I want to see this brother in the truth. Because when you find your brother, you will find yourself, as we're going to go through um, in these teachings. So this had quite an effect on Anna, my um, <laughs> realisation. <laughs> yeah, like, it was when you were sharing that, yes, like, this is so amazing, like, this is the way we're going to get to oneness, and I see, like, you are actually me, and you're just reflecting what I need to see and all this, and I was like, okay, okay, mm-hmm. Yeah, that all sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds nice, but I was really conflicted inside. Because for at that moment, for me, it was okay. He's like, okay, he's finally saying yes to this relationship. And he's finally getting into this. And we're going to do this together and all this. And then soon after, it just crashed down. <laughs> the whole thing just crashed down because I could feel like I actually want to have that just with you. Thank you very much. Like that, seeing the truth, okay, I only want that with you. I don't care about the rest. I want this to be really cool and special and nice, and I just want to keep this going. And with that, it was actually very, very, very painful. Oh, yeah, 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 I can't even feel like shame on sharing it because it was so painful. It was like, actually, I don't want the whole, like the whole planet or whatever. I don't want all my brothers that are around me. I just want you and I want you to love me in this specific way that you, I want you to love me. And, and to meet your expectations. Yes, to fulfill my uh, desires or whatever, meet all my expectations on how it, this should really look. And of course, as you might know, all those expectations were like crushing down in my face. I was crying and crying and crying, just seeing them fall away. Like, yeah, that is not happening, like that it will not happen. Can you just stop seeking for that in him? So yeah. With that, we found these amazing things in the Course that at that moment, when I first read it, it was so painful. I was like, yeah, you know what? Thank you, Ken, but I don't really like this, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to read to you and just share the whole process of this week for me with you guys. And yeah. Yeah, so basically, through, through um, this um, opening, it was like Jesus was pointing me into many, many different sections in the Course to help to see the ego's perspective and also the Holy Spirit's perspective. Was, oh, this is so great. Now I'm seeing the false and now I'm seeing the truth. This is brilliant. So this is, this is, this is the first part that he, he brought me to. And it's um, chapter 17, um, Shadows of the Past. The sh shadow figures 
represent the evil that you think was done to you. Okay, so these are the shadow figures. The sh shadow figures always speak for vengeance and all relationships into which they enter are totally insane. Without exception, these relationships have as their purpose the exclusion of the truth about the other and of yourself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so resistant, just saying no to this whole thing. But I'll just continue with this. This was kind of the ideal that I had. The ideal of the unholy relationship thus becomes one in which the reality of the other does not enter at all to spoil the dream. Unless the other really brings to the relationship, and the less the other really brings to the relationship, the better it becomes. Thus the attempt at union becomes a way of excluding even the one with whom the union was sought. For it was formed to get him out of it, and join with fantasies in uninterrupted bliss. Yeah, yeah false <laughs> ideas. Yeah. This is how I want the relationship. I want to join in this relationship. And, and that's I the end was of it. in my fantasies. I just want to have a relationship with these fantasies yeah. about what I want and just ignoring completely a union, a true union yeah. with you, yeah. my brother. Yeah. Don't so, worry about the truth. Yeah, just forget about it. <laughs> and this is what really was happening. But yeah, this part is really beautiful. You can read the next chapter, the yeah. next paragraph. The ego seeks to resolve its problems, not at their source, but where they were not made. And thus it seeks to guarantee there will be no solution. The Holy Spirit wants only to make his resolutions complete and perfect. And so he seeks and finds the source of the problems where it is, and there does it, and there undoes it. And with each step in his undoing is the separation more and more undone, and union brought closer. He is not at all confused by any reason for separation. All he perceives in separation is that it must be undone. Let him uncover the hidden spark of beauty in your relationships and show it to you. Its loveliness will so attract you that you will be unwilling ever to lose the sight of it again. And you will let this spark transform the relationship so you can see it more and more for you will want it more and more and become increasingly unwilling to let it be hidden from you. And you will learn to seek for and establish the conditions in which the beauty can be seen. Yeah, so this is so, so beautiful and it helped me so much. <laughs> So at that point, I was, as you know, so contracted about the whole idea, crying, angry, and you name it, <laughs> many, many things. And it's like everything was just coming up to the surface, just going and flashing and flashing and flashing. And well, this has been a big thing for you as well, hasn't yeah. it? Because of this love of understanding what the love really is. Yeah. And the relationships has been so so deep for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really has. And, and with that like deep pain, I was just really calling out for help. Like help, like help, like really. It was a huge call for help because what I actually felt is that I was starving. I was starving and it was like Jesus was just calling me come where you will be fulfilled stop looking for what you will not find it and you will keep feeling like you're starving and hungry and like yeah it's just that feeling of ugly feeling and so slowly something started to relax in me and 
I just really said, okay, Jesus, you really need to show me you are here with me. You really need to show me that you love me and you really need to convince me because right now I'm so preoccupied that Ken loves me this way that I want him to love me that I can't really hear you. And with that, um, it was it was all really helping me because that was like an opening for me. That moment was an opening. And soon all the miracles started to come on. And throughout the week, it was like all during the week, all these beautiful messages were coming in. But they were all like tying together like one theme. Like every day I would find many times a day something that would say, you are not alone, I'm with you. Like, I, I really tell you this, this is true, like it happened to me like two times each day or more, like all during the week. And it was just so beautiful because he was like constantly telling me, I am with you, I love you, come with me, be with me. And as I was like answering that call, it was like, I was just feeling better and better and happier and happier and I would like to share with you guys like one one like miracle that really felt huge for me like this was just like beautiful things that kept pulling me through th through this process and then one day I wasn't feeling that great but it was like I was getting out of it and I had the book I Married a Mystic in my nightstand, my little desk by my bed. And this is written by Kirsten Boxen, and it's the most beautiful book ever, really. <laughs> if you haven't read it, I really, really encourage you to do it. And I just saw the book there, and something was like catching my attention. Like, I just started looking at the at the cover and in the cover there is a picture of her and she's like looking at you or something like that but uh, as I was like sitting in my bed I just kept looking at the book and it was as if she was looking at me like following me but it was like something inviting like calling me something like that so I just <laughs> stared at the book like oh I just grabbed it and as I grabbed it the place where I grabbed it, it was open in one place where it said, return to love. I was like, oh my God, what is this? Like really, what is this? And this is what I found. And it was just so beautiful. So I just want to share this with you. This says, return to love. After so much healing around specialness, I wrote this Christmas message from my heart. We are the love that we feel, witness, and reflect. To see with the eyes of Christ is to know yourself truly as love. The idea of a special someone is an ego concept. It is the attempt to project specialness onto form. To mourn the loss of form in one's life is to mourn an illusion. Love has no object. Love cannot be contained within a body. Be glad that this is so. Love is. Love abounds and is content. Love is who we are. A common ego belief is that people can love each other. If this were true, then separation would be real. The return to God's love is the forgiveness of illusions, the forgiveness of the ego's illusory version of love and of the belief in separate people. Love is simple, love is kind. Love is natural, love is present. 
Love is an experience of joy. Love is the absence of fear and the result of releasing illusions. To cling to an image, a relationship, a memory of the past, no matter what name it is given, has nothing to do with real love. Joyful, loving memories are reflections of a love that is always present. Only devotion to God in the present moment opens the mind to the experience of love now. I thank God from the depths of my heart that nothing needs to change for love to be known. I thank Jesus with all my being for showing me the way to an experience of real love that can never end. So could we get the video ready as well, please, um, okay. Nicholas? Uh, number two video, please. Yeah, true love video. We want to share this gorgeous video that was also an answer to this same prayer that I had. Mm. And I really feel we'll enjoy this. And right after the video, we would like to invite you into this beautiful meditation. Uh, so we'll have the, some music and... From JP? Yeah, from JP. Called Wherever You Go. Wherever You Go. Which is <laughs> named by Francis. <laughs> and we'll just sink into that, mm. this, into this experience. I was praying about love and I was asking the Spirit and, and the Spirit says, love has no object. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's a lot different from earthly love. You know, I love my husband, my wife, my children, my, I love the, the Dodgers, I love the Yankees, you know. It, it's always, I love and there's something after it. You don't really see license plates with I heart or I, I love on it. It's bumper stickers, I love something, it's some object there. So I think what you're on to is the, the sense of that true intimacy, true love has a continuity that is within us and wants to just radiate through us, you know, and extend. And when we try to look for the continuity and form through the ego, it's very, very disappointing. Our expectations are always dashed. And that relates to what I talked about with, with going from looking for love in interpersonal relationships to getting into my higher calling, my purpose, to reconnect with the Source and feel that continuity to, without any dependence on the form. So it, the form didn't have to be a certain way for me to feel that, that joy and continuity. And I think, you know, there are like Mother Teresa, St. Francis, you know, on and on, all the mystics and saints, that's where their devotion was. They wanted to connect with the Source and then radiate that connection to everything and everyone. You know, like Mother Teresa said, look for, look for Jesus in everyone. See the Christ in everyone. Good practice to that kind of agape, unconditional love that's not so specific. So, we We'd like to invite everybody into a, a short meditation and we're going to play some music in the background and that come on when it's ready. Whenever you are with a brother, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. He will respond either with pain or with joy, depending on which teacher you are following. He will be imprisoned or released according to your decision, and so will you. Never forget your responsibility to him, because it is your responsibility to yourself. Give him his place in the kingdom, and you will have yours.
When you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him you will find yourself or lose yourself. Whenever two sons, two sons of God meet, they are given another chance at salvation. Do not leave anyone without giving salvation to him and receiving it for yourself. For I am always there with you in remembrance of you. My holy brother, I would enter into all your relationships and step between you and your fantasies. Let my relationship to you be real to you and let me bring reality to your perception of your brothers. They were not created to enable you to hurt yourself through them. They were created to create with you. This is the truth that I would interpose between you and your goal of madness. Be not separate from me, and let not the holy purpose of atonement be lost to you in dreams of vengeance. Relationships in which such dreams are cherished have excluded me. Let me enter in the name of God and bring you peace that you may offer peace to me. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure mm. to see you all. <laughs>